Well, good morning. It is the 11th of January, Friday, 2024. And if you like snow and cold and wind, you are in for a treat. According to the weather reports, we're going to get a considerable amount of snow, very high winds later today into tomorrow, and by Sunday, mind-numbing cold. So if you like 30 below wind chill, your day's coming. Seriously though, the weather is going to deteriorate rather significantly. Travel is going to become difficult, if not impossible. So do consider well if you're going to go anywhere today um, and take your time. Today would be a good day to get that household project done that you've been putting off. Maybe start that book you've been meaning to read or perhaps even begin the great American novel. You're going to have plenty of time. Announcements for the next few days. Right now, worship services are still on at First and St. Paul Lutheran for Sunday morning, 8.30 at St. Paul, 10.30 at First. Services will be live streamed, although do pay attention uh, to news, Facebook page, emails, and text messages regarding services in case we have to change or perhaps even cancel. Uh, we will let you know as far in advance as we can. <clears throat> Our council meeting at St. Paul's is scheduled for Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, so please take note of that. And I think those are the announcements I want to touch on today. I do want to talk about two Lutheran churches, both of which are named St. Peter. St. Peter Lutheran here in Garnavillo has been without a pastor for close to two years now and have not had much success in the call process, as is the same case with St. Peter Lutheran in Green, Iowa. I served St. Peter in Green for 13 years before coming back to Garnavilla nine years ago. And just past week had a funeral service at St. Peter's in Green because they're without a pastor. And that raises a question I'm hearing in a lot of places around Northeast Iowa and indeed many places within the Lutheran Church, the real shortage of pastors. We have approximately 600 pastors retiring or dying a year in the ELCA and probably less than 400 coming out of seminary. And so we are at a considerable deficit in terms of ordained called clergy. And that makes it a challenge for smaller communities and smaller congregations to even get interviews. And so what can we do about that? Well, in the short run, the best thing we can do is continue to pray and rely upon the work of the Holy Spirit. Because I am confident that the Holy Spirit will find a solution for this kind of a problem. It may not be one that we originally think of. It may not be one that we'd even considered. But as we pay attention to the work of the Spirit, we might be surprised at how he leads. And another, a little longer term solution is considering ministry. There are a great number of folk who have gifts for ministry, who have the spiritual makeup for it, who would be a blessing to the church. A young person just graduating high school or in college might want to consider pastoral ministry. It, it can be a very rewarding and spiritually blessing profession. Perhaps you're a second career person who always felt the call of God, but never have had the time to go to seminary or be seriously in study about that. There are programs in the larger church now where you can be um, ordained in place, enter in what is called team ministry, where you take your academics online and you work within a parish. And I'm sure as the need grows, we're going to become even more creative. The key here is to remember that pastoral ministry is important in the life of the church. But it is not the whole church. The ministry does not come to a congregation with the pastor and the moving van. The congregation's ministry is already here. You call a pastor to help you develop and improve that ministry, but the ministry is already here. And so even if you're waiting for a pastor or looking for a pastor, the questions you might also be asking is, how can I, as an individual member of this congregation, do more ministry in the name of Christ in my congregation. And you might be surprised by the number of ways in which you can do ministry. St. Peter's in Garnavillo has the Stevens ministry as well as other ministries. 
Uh, St. Peter's in Green is working on those kinds of ministries as well. And while they may not completely replace pastoral ministry, they can keep ministry alive and functioning in the congregation. For the rest of us who are fortunate enough to have a called pastor, one of the things we can do is to offer to help our brothers and sisters in Christ find ways in which we can share ministries, do the things together that we're currently duplicating, and above all, pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit would guide and lead those called to consider these congregations, to come and see the value in the communities in which they reside, and for the work that the Lord has for them to do. I'm confident, as I told the president of St. Peter and Green on Wednesday, that the Holy Spirit will provide a pastor at the right time. It's hard for us to wait, but we trust that the Holy Spirit will provide. And so, let's be in prayer for our two St. Peter congregations here in Garnavillo and in Green, Iowa. Pray that God will send them the shepherd that they need, but also pray that they will be more energized to do the ministries they can do and are currently doing, so they don't lose heart and become discouraged, but rather see that God is always at work in every circumstance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your Holy Spirit's guidance on our sister congregations, St. Peter here in Garnavillo and St. Peter in Green, but all the congregations that are seeking pastors. There are many around us who are currently without pastors and who are looking themselves. By your Holy Spirit, guide and direct those who are called to the ministry of word and sacrament to consider these congregations but also continue to equip these congregations to do the ministries they're already doing and to discover new ministries that they may not have thought of. Remind us, Lord, that the work of the gospel is the work of the whole church. It doesn't belong to just one individual, but it is all of our responsibility. We pray for people who must be out in this difficult weather. We pray, especially as the temperatures go down below zero, that people stay home and stay safe. We thank you for hearing us as we pray today. We ask it all in your name. Amen. Well, it's currently snowing rather heavily here in Garnavillo, and I'm told the winds are going to pick up this afternoon, so if you're going to get anything done, get it done this morning. And I will see you tomorrow, and until then, goodbye now. <laughs>